Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 3 o'clock to 3.30 p.m. session of the 2017 Open Simulator Community Conference. As a reminder to our in-world and web audience, you can view the full conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org and tweet your questions or comments to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC17. This session, we are happy to introduce a terrific session called Why I Don't Need a Physics Engine. Our speaker today is Kayaker Magic. Kayaker, after four decades of writing code in the real world, Kayaker Magic has been scripting in virtual worlds since 2008. He started by extending his love of water sports, especially kayaking, sailing, and surfing into Second Life, and then opens him. But he has expanded his interests to, into many different fields of scripting here. Welcome all. Let's begin the session. Hi, thanks, Lear. I'm so happy that you are my moderator because I know you crave excitement and I, I hope to uh, do some uh, scary things up here on the stage. I uh, know how it feels to be a developer and no matter what you do, people always ask for more, more. They want more features. They want things to run faster, more like that other system over there. I thought the devs of OpenSim would like to hear someone say, less, less for a change. I've done, <clears throat> I've not quite succeeded in doing this because I am asking for something here, but maybe I can help uh, write it when the time comes. I'm a bit of a shit disturber and I'm, uh, I'm probably going to get excited here and, and, and call the, uh, the, the, the physics engines by derogatory names, but you shouldn't take that too seriously. As a matter of fact, I know how hard it is to do a physical simulation, and, uh, and I think that the physics engines that we have are all awesome. Uh, this is a picture from a, a short video which you can find on uh, YouTube. I'll paste it into chat here. You can watch it at your leisure, and in general, you can search for bullet in YouTube and find lots of uh, interesting videos like this. And I'm not picking on, on bullet sim here. It's just it, it's an easier one to find on YouTube than, uh, than any of the other ones. So the, the point of my talk is that the physics engines are very expensive and they use up a lot of resources in memory and CPU time. And, uh, and do uh, I ask the question, and I, I don't think this gets asked very often, do we really need it? What are the things that the physics engines do that, uh, that we think we need? Well, here's a list of things. Uh, the first one there keeps your feet on the ground. I'll go, go through these in order later. You don't need that me to read the slide to you. The, the first of these keeps your feet on the ground is uh, the, the physics of the avatar itself. And from observing uh, the avatars in action, I keep asking myself, where is the physics in the avatar? The avatars don't accelerate when they move. They decelerate instantly. Uh, they seem to, even when they're falling, they, they reach their terminal velocity almost instantly. And then they don't bounce when they land unless you have a... Uh, a bounce uh, 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 animation, and that's actually just faking uh, the physics. And I get the impression that the physics in the in the avatar's uh, behavior is mostly faked. It seems to be made of a bunch of special cases. And I think if you kept the special cases and got the physics, the rest of the physics out of the avatar, most people would never even notice that there weren't any uh, any any physics. There wasn't any physics involved. The, the uh, one thing that people say the physics engine does is it keeps you from walking through walls. But avatars, again, behave in a rather non-physical way. When you run into a wall, you just stop moving. It looks like it's one of those special cases. When the avatar collides with an object, you just make it stop. And as a matter of fact, though, uh, this is a general part of the problem of detecting uh, uh, collisions between all objects. And the physics engine has needed to do this for, for a long time. It needs to detect when a ball collides with the ground to make it bounce. It needs to detect when a bullet uh, runs into something to, uh, to transfer a uh, damage. And, 
And so this is the one thing that the physics engine does that it, that it shares with everyone else that, that I found a use for. I'd like to be able to detect when uh, the, the scripted objects that I make collide with other things. And, I, I, and I'm glad that I do get notification of, of some of these events, but I don't get those notifications in all the, the, the times that I need it. The physics engine seems to be kind of selfish. It doesn't need to uh, detect non-physical objects uh, colliding with each other, and so it doesn't even uh, tell me about, about those sorts of events. And I've had a lot of trouble trying to use the physics engine in, in, lo other, in lots of scripted objects because um, it's, it's much less predictable than, than, than scripting an object to move it yourself. And so I would prefer to move objects myself and then have the, the, uh, the collision engine, if there was one, tell me when they collide and have me decide what to do instead of having two boats colliding in the water. And they often, if, if they're physical boats, they often do bizarre things like jumping up in the air or, or flipping upside down. And I think I could script better behavior than that in a, in a special purpose boat script. So the other thing that... Uh, that physics is supposed to be good for is for making things fall down. Well, uh, what things do we really need to fall down in in uh, in the uh, virtual worlds? I'm going to paste a couple of uh, videos into uh, into chat, and these are examples actually of Bullet Sim being amazing again. And and it's, I'm not I'm not here to to say that I don't like the physics engines. I think they're fantastic. But I think they're, they're perhaps, this may not be the right place for them. I also think that a Daytona Formula race car is fantastic, but I don't want to use it to drive to work every morning. So these, these uh, videos here are people doing amazing things with bullet sim. For example, building uh, those, those the video I showed you before of the, of the bullet uh, having the building collapse. That was actually a standalone program uh, that was it didn't have to generate its its uh, images in real time, but these are examples of people using Bullet Sim to do things in real time. And I have a, for people who don't have time for the videos, here's some some stills from those videos. This is a building with uh, with 1,000 blocks, and they all uh, uh, fall down in a fairly realistic way, and it's amazing that, uh, that this is even possible in a general purpose program like, uh, like OpenSim. And here's a, uh, someone testing bullet sim with uh, 2,500 balls uh, that you can run around and kick, and, uh, and that's kind of fun. It's always fun to stack things up and watch them fall down, but that's not, I think, a core use of Open Simulator. Here's a, a chain that is, uh, that's hanging down and you can fly into it and the, the chains uh, swing back and forth and, and bounce in a realistic way. And here's one of those other videos. It's a chain between two poles and it swings back and forth and behaves in a physical way. And it's really impressive that it does this. But this isn't the correct way, for example, in, uh, in uh, Open Simulator to say implement a swinging chair. Uh, uh, the, the owners of, of the grids that you do things on this will ask you, please stop doing this. Please stop stacking a thousand objects up because it's creating a lot of lag that is slowing down the experience for other people. You could build a, ch a swinging chair without using physics and make it swing back and forth in a reasonable way. And, uh, and that uh, 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 is, could be done without physics. So last year, I gave a talk about... Uh, bullets in uh, OpenSim or about uh, weapons in general. And I'm going to res a couple of objects on the stage here. And unfortunately, I have to res them really close to the audience because there's a bug in OpenSim uh, uh, 0 0.8 where uh, if, you, uh, if you try and cast a ray in a weapon, it will... Um, it will collide with invisible objects all over the place. And the stage has a lot of those invisible objects. I need to, there we go. So I'm going to, uh, to try and shoot down this and I'm having trouble aiming. Oh dear. But perhaps, 
perhaps you're seeing uh, the bullet fly through the air. I tried to slow them down for this talk. And uh, the, the gun is uh, not letting me reload it very fast. And I keep missing. Of course, that would happen in the middle of a presentation. Uh, well, then, while it's uh, reloading, I'll demonstrate uh, a couple other features of this weapon that uh, the bullets explode when they hit something. Uh, these are total non-physical bullets. And um, perhaps, you know, I have to fly over there. I made it over somebody's head. That bullet just flew into another region and generated an explosion in another region. And that's something that uh, you can't do in OpenSIM 0.8, of course. And uh, my cursor is not appearing. Ah, so I finally hit the, uh, the blimp and it's going to crash into the audience. So I have spent too much time on bullets because I spent uh, some time talking about that uh, last year. And another thing that the physics engine is good for is for just making things move smoothly. And so there are a lot of, uh, of small items in uh, OpenSim that you want to move around, like you, know, you want fish to swim in your water, <laughs> and you want uh, uh, your birds to fly through the air. And uh, the non-determinism of the physics engine has always been a problem for me, that when I try to make a fish stay in the water, uh, if I use tools like uh, uh, set keyframe motion, which we didn't originally have, if you recall, it was added late in Second Life and it was added even later in OpenSim. So for a long time, you try and move things like move to target, which was a useless tool for moving uh, uh, small items around because it was critically damped, meaning that things start fast and then slow down. I want my fish to swim at a constant speed and there wasn't any tool to do that except the, the vehicle API and programming, writing a, a, a script to become a vehicle seemed way overkill for just making a fish swim around. And then there's the determination, the deterministic nature of, uh, of key, set keyframe motion. I can tell my fish where to go and I can tell it don't go out of the water or I can tell my bird don't fly outside of the, uh, of the region. And speaking of birds, here's uh, a... Uh, so for a minute, I thought it was a dead bird. Here's a couple of birds to fly around the region, and you'll probably see them doing things like flying through the, uh, the stage and through the screen. But this is an object moved with set keyframe motion, and I claim it's better than physics because of that uh, deterministic uh, uh, capability and because it's very easy to use compared to using the uh, the, uh, the, the the physics uh, API for vehicles. And the other thing, well, well, so far, I don't know if you've noticed, I said uh, avatar physics don't, avatars don't seem to really need physics. I've said that uh, for bullets, I don't need physics. For, uh, for small moving objects, I don't need physics. And then we, everyone says, ah, well, everyone wants physics uh, for their vehicles. And you would think that set keyframe motion is not going to be a good tool for, uh, for, for building a vehicle because, well, it moves at a constant velocity and you want all those physical uh, abilities like acceleration and, uh, and collisions to, uh, in your vehicles. But I found that, uh, that you can script a vehicle with set keyframe motion and OpenSim sort of forced me to develop this technique, which is to do my own physical calculations infrequently like once a second, and then to call set keyframe motion and have it interpolate uh, the, the position of the, uh, of the object uh, in, in between those calculations. And that's allowed me to do a whole bunch of, of non-physical vehicles, which had another advantage, at least in the, in the, especially in the early days, that set keyframe motion has been working well in OpenSim since version 7.6. And if I have a, a vehicle that uses that, 
then it 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 was it started working back then when when ODE uh, could not uh, basically was 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 uh, not usable to make uh, physical vehicles, and we had to wait for Bullet Sim, and we had to wait for uh, UB ODE recently before we could we could write a, a a physical vehicle script. So I could write vehicle scripts that were working before the physics engine was ready, and then. Uh, when Kitely came along, I could put a vehicle for sale on the Kitely uh, uh, marketplace, and somebody who who was in a region far, far away that didn't have Bullet Sim or who had Bullet Sim when I wrote the the script for for UBODE, that my scripts would work everywhere in the metaverse. And so I, uh, I, I, I became really fond of the idea of not using uh, physics engines to uh, to do my my vehicles. And uh, let's try another demonstration. Let me give myself a little bit of uh, runway here. Up, up, up. So I can probably still talk while I fly around. And this is a, a flying uh, physical object script. And you'll probably see me uh, miss and fly through walls and things like that. Boy, I'd like to have uh, the, uh, the collision engine tell me. And here I am running into the edge whoops, of things and uh, recovering because I can script. And now I'm totally lost. <laughs> Hey, Kayaker, you're on the back side behind the viewer, behind all yeah. the signage. Come back to the center. <laughs> I'm working on it. I think I'm flying around in circles back here. Maybe I should just... Uh, I yeah, should you just can always get, get another carpet. They're, they're cheap, man. <laughs> uh, well, now I made a terrible mistake. Yeah, well, I made the terrible mistake of uh, of stepping off, and flying isn't allowed, so it took me a while to get back. <laughs> and let's see, I have a few more videos of other vehicles. Uh, we we I'm sure we don't have time to. Uh, um, to do much of that. So uh, this first video is a short one, and the second one is a longer version of a uh, of a sailboat that that I that I did for OpenSim that uh, is all non-physical, and yet it has all sorts of of uh, features. Like uh, it's a sailboat that has leeway, uh, meaning that when when it's not sailing, the wind blows it downwind. It has a healing, which means that it the, the, the boat tips over, and it tips over in a different direction than the sailboat in the um, in the the physics uh, vehicle API, because uh, I think the physics API is, is wrong, that it, it always has the boat uh, tilting. Um, actually, I'm not quite sure where it's tilting it. My boat is tilting in the direction of the lift vector of the sail. And I don't think that's how the uh, uh, the, the the boat uh, script in the physics API does it. And so I'm re really uh, proud of that of that vehicle. So I took uh, a version of that vehicle and put it in the sandbox, and I reprogrammed it to sail on terrain. And so you could go to the sandbox and try that out. And I also stuck in the uh, in the sandbox here a. Um, uh, a physical, a non-physical, uh, wheeled, wheeled vehicle that you can jump on and drive around. And that is uh, just about the end of the talk. I've found that. Well, one one more point is that, uh, in my case, I would love to to get all the memory back from the uh, from the physics engine, and I could replace it with just a, a handful or a half a handful of, of vehicle scripts that don't use physics and use set keyframe motion instead. So the only remaining thing that the physics engine does for me is that it does collisions, 
And so I'd like to have a collision engine, and I'd be willing to share that information with the physics engine if it needed it, but I don't even need that physics engine. So you can go to, uh, oh, and that, that, this slide was for what I was, uh, was, was just saying about I need a collision engine instead of a, uh, of a physics engine. And my last slide is uh, some links to, uh, to find me. Uh, I have a, um, a booth in the, in, in the expos, uh, expo, it's written down on the slide for uh, booth 22, but it says ocean engineering on it. Uh, and if you go there, I have some, uh, some freebies to give away. I've got uh, full perm versions of some uh, cast ray non-physical weapon scripts. I have uh, my, my zero leg holiday lights, uh, which is uh, just uh, a way of making blinking lights without, without even using a script. Uh, a lot of my stuff like the sailboat is already for sale at, on, uh, on the Kitely market. Uh, I have uh, things to play with in the sandbox. I mentioned the sailboat and the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, the 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 all-terrain vehicle. That all-terrain vehicle is much more fun on rough terrain because it uh, it bounces and tilts and uh, and it's it's like uh, the real thing of being bounced around on on rough terrain. And also there, I have uh, some non-physical uh, weapons to try out. There's a couple of these um, uh, uh, target blimps that you can shoot down with various different weapons. Hey, thank you, Kayaker. We had a question come in from Gamisa. Um, physics, can it be killed via OpenSim.ini, and did you try it? Uh, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I've been curious to find out there, there's, a, there's something called basic physics. And uh, I wonder if that is, is what I want, except, of course, what I want is, is more notifications. And so in my spare time... And I like to say that I have uh, some spare time scheduled for 2028, and uh, and I have uh, 1 million 876 other projects to do in the meantime. And so I have I I I am kind of embarrassed to say, yes, I would like OpenSim to have better notifications of collisions, and no, I haven't sat down and learned uh, C++ or C# -sharp to uh, uh, to contribute and and do that uh, myself. And so uh, that's something that, that I might be able to do, and I haven't uh, found the time yet to do projects like that. Well, thank you, Kayaker. And you'll notice in the chat, Professor Fish and Graham Mills, several of them have some more to discuss on that. So I want to point out that he is on OSCC Expo Zone 3 in booth 19. Unfortunately, I can't go and hang out there because I have to run off to my next meeting soon. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you, Kayaker, for a terrific presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following Kayaker's session, the next session will begin at 4 p.m., in this keynote region, and it's entitled, An Educator's Approach to Developing Usable Prototypes for Serious Games in Open Simulator. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 17 Poster Expo in OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again, Kayaker, and thank you, audience.